been getting so many messages from readers who have said, where was this book when I needed it five years ago, 10 years ago? Welcome to the session. We are uh, here to discuss a book by Jody Herbeck, uh, Rock Your Role as Salesforce Admin. Welcome, Jody. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, Jody has 20 plus years of experience in Salesforce ecosystem. I have worked with her personally and learned a lot. I'm sure there is a lot of learnings bundled in this book. So let's hear from Jody about her book. Well, first, let me just say hello, hello, and thank you so much for having me. And it has been my pleasure to have worked with you in the past. Um, and I have to give a shout out. It's been really fun to watch the growth and success of your company. Um, so you. I'm, I'm really pleased to be, to be part of this today and, and to, to, to have had an opportunity to um, partner with you previously. So thank you for that. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, so talk to us about your book and, uh, you know, how did this happen? Yeah. So yeah. So rock your role as a Salesforce admin and the subtitle, I got a call out so everybody understand what it's about. It's create value, calm the chaos and supercharge your Salesforce career. And this is a book, as, as you said, I, I like to tell everybody 20 years in the making and it only took one pandemic for me to actually sit down and get it over the finish line. Um, but it's been something that I've been thinking about for a long time. And um, as you've mentioned, 20 years is, is not an insignificant Salesforce career. Um, and in that time, I've had the opportunity to literally work with dozens of Salesforce admins. Um, I think when I did the math, there were almost 30 that I had directly hired and managed in client side roles. And I've worked with dozens more in the course of um, the tenure I had working at Salesforce as a customer success manager. Um, I was a freelance um, consultant for a long time where I was helping people actually train up internal staff who would own the system after, after I'd implemented it. And it, it was clear to me that, you know, sometimes it's just little tweaks that really differentiate the ordinary Salesforce admin from the extraordinary. And I really believe that everybody wants to come in and rock their role, as, as I like to say, and do a great job and add value. And it's not always intuitive what that means beyond, you know, hands on keyboards, right? It's not really intuitive sometimes that there's processes and procedures that you can do. And certainly that there's different skills and soft skills and things that are beyond just technical Salesforce administration that can, that can really make the difference. Um, so I'm sure, I'm sure you've seen some of those things over time, right? The, the difference between the, the okay and the superstars that are really making a difference on the Salesforce front. That's correct. And uh, since I'm in India, you know, there are a lot of Salesforce developers who, who think that, you know, being a developer is a big thing, but taking this responsibility of admin is super huge. And I've seen people grow in their career if they have the qualities which you have mentioned in the book. So let's, let's talk about who is the real audience here. Yeah. Who, yeah, thank who, you who is the audience so of this book? Clearly, my, my ideal avatar, my target reader, if you will, is a client-side Salesforce admin. That is where I have spent you know, the bulk of my career on the client side. It's a, it's a role that's near and dear to my heart. I believe that Salesforce admins are unsung heroes and that they're leaders inside organizations in the sense that um, they're so influential when done right and how they're able to impact processes and systems that, that you know, not only drive the associated experience, but also you know, the customer experience. Um, and it's often a job where you're not leading in the sense of having necessarily a big title, but really can leave a huge and very um, impactful footprint on an organization. So Salesforce admins are my primary audience. Um, but that said, it's been really interesting as I've had readers, you know, in the last couple of weeks since, um, since the book launch, 
who are from all stripes in the Salesforce community and telling me that they're getting value out of it. And you know, certainly there's a lot of crossover with Salesforce consultants. Um, yes. There's a few things in the book where you know we would certainly probably operate a little bit differently in terms of how we negotiate with internal stakeholders versus um, you know paid clients. Um, but for the most right. part, the scores, the core skills really are the same in terms of you know the the message of adding value is make sure you're figuring out what they really need, the why behind the ask. Um, figuring out what they need, not what they ask for. You know, that's a, that's a skill that's very relevant for consultants as well as admins. Um, so, you know, I like to think there's a little something for everybody, um, even if your actual title is not Salesforce admin, if you play in this space. Correct. And I would definitely say that a lot of uh, Salesforce developers based out of India can take a lot of value from your book as well, because when we say developers, they do both the jobs, admin as well as development. So a lot of value can be derived there as well. So, so Jody, tell me, uh, if if you are starting out this uh, like 20 years ago, and if you had this book, what's the five things you would like take this and like be be super amazed of this? Yeah, so great question. And I'll tell you, I might have had a different answer a couple of weeks ago before I launched it. But um, mm -hmm. I have been getting so many messages from readers who have said, where was this book when I needed it five years ago, 10 years ago from, you know, the, the more experienced folks that are reading it. And I've asked them some of those questions like, "Ooh, tell me, like, what do you see as getting value? So I'm going to I'm going to answer based on some kind of real world um, feedback that I've already had in terms of what, what people are getting. Um, one is I've had a lot of people say, you know, I didn't know exactly what the admin job entailed, right? Uh -huh. And so the ability to read a book that kind of gives you a sense and gives you a little bit of color of what kind of things am I actually gonna be doing? What's it gonna feel like to be in this role? What kind of conversations will I have? What kind of projects will I do, right? And so that was one of the, um, the pieces of feedback that I got specifically. Um, I cheated, I took a couple notes. Um, the, the second thing that somebody said to me was, I wish I had this, is it provides some really good ideas around, you know, what, what do I need to know as table stakes aside from the org itself? Um, and I, mm -hmm. I have a chapter in the book to fish. It's called, um, know thy company, know thy peeps and know thy org. Um, and the company and the peeps are, are pieces that, um, I've been told people don't always give as much credence to in terms of, you know, it didn't occur to me that I needed to come in and spend as much time observing how the organization work, observing the culture of the organization, understanding what the company's mission and the company's objectives are. And then of course, sitting down with users and, and not just end users, but functional leaders, be it sales leaders, customer support leaders. So um, some of those things, I think those of us that have been doing this for a long time take for granted. Of course you would do that, right? Of course you'd meet with leaders. Of course you'd meet with end users. But you know, the feedback that I've had is, especially for newcomers, they're so focused on the app and what they've learned and making sure they're remembering all the things about roles and profiles and security. There's that whole element of the job that maybe they hadn't even thought of yet. Uh, correct. Correct. So they just I'm assuming say, you relate. Are the, are the sharing rules, are the criteria based sharing rules or, uh, you know, somehow it is shared, you know, they are, they are so, so immersed into figuring that out, but they forget about who it is shared to, what's the use case. You know, they, they don't even know sometimes what's the use case, how it is applied in the real life. So knowing the business, yes. Yeah, and, and even just simple things, knowing the language of the business, right? Do we call them customers? Are they clients? Or we call them something else altogether, right? Those are little nuances, but they really make a big difference in terms of um, the ability to um, connect with, with, your, with your end users and with your leaders. A um, couple other things are... are um, I think getting organized. So that's another piece of feedback that, that I've had. So the, you know, the, the book has, you know, some things that are very soft skill based, but I do weave in there some tactics 
Um, mm -hmm. So um, you might remember, because you and I work together, that one of the things that I do in almost every org I ever work in is create a custom object called object overview. And we Correct. use that object to maintain information and links to documentation that might exist in Confluence or you know diagrams that might have been built in, in Lucid, Dart, something like that. But to ensure that everybody that's coming in to look at this org understands why a particular custom object was built, um, how it works, what the ownership is, where there's automation, where there's integration. We also do a, a junction object um, to our user table so we can codify like, who's got permission to request changes on here, who needs to be informed when there's changes on here. So that's just an example of there's a lot of very um, tactical suggestions around how an admin can organize. Um, so that's a piece documentation. That Yes, exactly. That that I um, that I hear a lot about as, as far as adding value, and then I think the the last piece that people have said to me um, has been, you know, I wish I knew this was going in to the role, having an expectation and understanding that you're not just an order taker, allows you to really kind of step in from the get go into that power and be the leader and the influencer. And, and recognize the role that you play, right? And, and I believe wholeheartedly done right, you know, a great Salesforce admin is not there to take orders. The value they bring is the expertise in the platform and being able to make recommendations and, you know, what's rolled out and when's it rolled out and how is it rolled out? And, you know, how can we make this platform, this investment be even more successful and impactful for a company? And I I think if we can get everybody knowing that going in, right, it's a shorter learning curve. They're held to a higher standard, even in their own mind. Um, and it's a it's a win-win for everybody. Correct. Do, do you think in, in a professional um, software development methodologies, we have a role of business analyst? Uh, we kind of don't have that roles ever in the Salesforce ecosystem. Do you think an admin and business analyst roles overlap somewhere? Yeah. It's a, it's a very hot topic these days to be for sure. And you know, we've certainly seen that with the new certification that came out. Um, mm -hmm. So I think you nailed it in the sense that historically that was not a role in the Salesforce ecosystem. By the way, okay. historically product management was not a role in the Salesforce ecosystem, right? I mean, I guarantee you three, four years ago, that wasn't a term, neither of those things okay. that you really heard if you were doing Salesforce for a living. And I think it's twofold. I think um, the complexity of the platform as it's becoming more like any other part of the tech stack is starting mm -hmm. to warrant teams that look like more traditional software teams, right? That are doing custom dev. And right. I, I think we're seeing that in the roles that are showing up and how teams are being formed. Um, that said, I think that, you know, B and BA generally, we're starting to see more in consulting roles, I think, than necessarily in clients. And I think the reason for that is historically, the Salesforce admin has been the business analyst, right? That's That's right. been an expectation that they're somewhat functional and that they can go out and be, I call it front of the house, right? Front of the house facing um, and yeah. understand the business and map processes and look at areas for process improvement and do all the things that we expect of in a, in a BA role. So I do think every Salesforce admin is a BA. I think what we're starting to see now is, and, and this will be a trend going forward if I had to put my money on it, is not every BA is going to be a Salesforce admin. And as again, administration of the system is a little bit more complex than it used to be. I think flow is a really um, indication of that, right? Uh, we're at an inflection mm -hmm. point here where it's harder to be an accidental admin or a part-time admin when you need to spend the time getting experience and expertise around some fairly complicated things. We're going to start seeing more of a bifurcation between who's doing hands-on keyboard and who's doing front of the house work. Um, I think it's cool. good in a lot of ways, but I also think we need to make sure we don't lose the secret sauce, which has always been Salesforce, which is business people 
who weren't technologists. Me, I'm a, I'm a, grew up in sales. I'm, I'm sales, sales ops, right? I'm not a technologist. And yet I've been, you know, building Salesforce systems for 20 years. That's part of the secret sauce. We knew what was needed. We knew how to build things that worked um, for business people because we were the ones that needed to use it. So, you know, progress is great. And I think the, you know, the new innovation on the platform that we're seeing regularly is amazing. We just have to be really careful that we don't lose that secret sauce. Awesome. Awesome. Completely agree with you. Would your next book be targeted towards business analysts? <laughs> well, by the way, there is there is a chapter in here which talks about putting on your BA hat. So I, I do recognize wow. the, the importance of this. Um, it's funny. I, I go back and forth. I do I do see future books um, in my in my in my short term horizon, assuming that I continue to get good feedback. Um, I think that there's more to provide for Salesforce admins. Uh, so I don't think yes. I'm done yet. I've got, um, I've got a little bit of a concept of rock the clock with uh, productivity tips, tricks, so you can get focused to deliver great Salesforce. Um, so I'm putting that out there publicly. If you think that's important, you know, and you hear, hear this, <laughs> you know, give a woot woot. Um, I Definitely. also think there's, you know, an entire, um, you know, rock your career as a Salesforce admin. There's there's advice here that will help you be successful in your role, but I really didn't go into a lot of nuances relating to um, how I believe one can own their career, progress their career, be responsible for owning and driving their own career. So I have a I have a concept around that. Um, however. I also believe that um, there's a book to be written for companies and users of Salesforce um, to help them stop wasting their money on Salesforce and instead maximize their spend. So that's another one that's kind of been kicking around for a while that I think there's things that companies could be doing that would get a lot more bang for the buck out of the platform. That would be so helpful because, uh, you know, VS consultants, like our teams, and I've spoken to so many architects. They definitely say that we suggest companies, you know, apply Salesforce in a specific way so that they can uh, they can make a lot of return on investments. But somehow somebody drives a factor saying that, hey, in my last company I did that, I want to replicate here. Yeah. But use cases oftenly are different in different companies. And somehow you have to just, you know, fight that. And at times you have to agree saying that, okay, let's implement it. Yeah. How, how do you suggest admins deal with that kind of situation? Yeah, it's, it's a challenge, right? To make sure that people yeah. are, are spending cycles on, on the right things. Yeah. So I think, I think there's a couple of things. One is, I think there's a lot to be said around providing context. And I think ad admins can be really helpful in this. And what I mean by that is a lot of times people ask for things and, you know, 80% of it's really easy. And let's just say I'm making up a number 20% of it's really hard. And they, if they knew that they might say, actually 80, that 80% is really all I need. I didn't understand that this 20% was going to require so much extra effort or extra time or more complicated maintenance going forward, right? So mm -hmm. I think one of the ways that admins can be really impactful is as they're hearing requests, making sure that they're providing that kind of context so that um, people can make more informed decisions. Um, similarly, I think admins can be really helpful in pointing out the things that are really easy, right? We could have a lot of times the, the opposite problem occurs, which is companies aren't asking for certain things because they're expecting it's hard. Maybe it was hard with their prior software, or they just assume that sounds really complicated. Whereas Salesforce might offer something right out of the box that's easy breezy with a little, you know, clicks, not even code. We could stand up, you know, a knowledge base as, as just an example. And so I think one of the areas where Salesforce admins can be very, very impactful is making sure that people understand like what's in the platform that you already have, right? What's easy? What are the things you're not asking for or not using that you could be? 
and should be because they would really bring a big return on, on this investment. Correct. Do you have any fun story with reports and dashboards? <laughs> uh, do I have any fun stories with reports and dashboards? I mean, I, I'm when sure, I I'm sure about, it is covered in the book. What, what's that? I'm sure it is covered in the book. Yeah, I don't tell you how to do reports and dashboards. What I talk about, there's a couple of things I talk about with reports and dashboards in the book. So can't give too much away or nobody's going to read it. Um, but, but one thing in particular is, again, this, this kind of piggybacks on what we we're just talking about is, you know, admins sometimes get in the habit of just providing the reports that are asked for, right? And I think, you know, where they really add value is thinking about what's not being asked for that's in here that I can serve up, right? I mean, the, the Salesforce admin knows the data that's in the system. They know there's nuggets in there that are full of the insight about the company or the sales process or what, you know, where there's, you know, gaps in the customer service process, whatever it is. And they also know that there's probably plenty of things that people aren't looking at that they should be. So, you know, mm -hmm. one piece of advice I offer is making sure that you're being thoughtful, not only about what's asked for and how that's presented, but what's not asked for. And then here's, here's the big, you know, the big, aha, we're not just serving up the report. We're helping, you know, call out the, so what? What's this report telling me? What, why do I care? And then taking it one step further and saying, and what do I have in my admin bag of trips that can help solve that problem, right? Right. So if I've got a report that's showing that certain sales reps, for instance, are, you know, having problems losing the sale because they're not, you know, talking to enough people in the organization. Well, what do I have in my bag of tricks that can help with that? Whether that's, you know, different ways that we can leverage opportunity roles and, and put that on a leaderboard, whether that's something I can do with paths to enforce a sales process, like whatever it is, I don't know off the top of my head, all the things. But the idea is where Salesforce admins can really add value with reporting is, again, identifying things that people aren't looking at, but then saying, you know, so what? And how can I help with whatever that so what is? Great, amazing. Totally 100% agree with that statement. For the audience, uh, we will drop the link of the book in the description. Please order it. Uh, I'm shamelessly promoting this book. Uh, Jody, do you want to speak about the promotion? Well, so the only other thing I want to say is this, because we've only talked about one part of the book, which is adding value. And I, there's a second half of the book that I would be remiss if I didn't mention. And early on when we said, why did I write the book? I want everybody to rock their role and be a superstar admin. But there's something that I warn everybody about, which is I call it the Salesforce admin conundrum which I've seen a lot, which is the more value you deliver, the more everybody wants a piece of you, right? Finance wants in and now customer support wants in and marketing wants in. They've seen what you've done and they want a report and a dashboard and hey, my whole process should be automated. And so there's a challenge with really great admins who by the way, love to say yes and love to help and think there's nothing more fun than delivering solutions that like rock your, you know, your constituents world. That's great fun. So we're like, sure, sure, I'll do it. And we end up overwhelmed. And I've been there, I've seen my team be there. And so I would be remiss if I didn't say the second reason I wrote the book and the second half of the book is really strategies and tips to help you over deliver without overwhelm. So I just wanted to throw that out there because um, that's important to me. Um, that if we're going to be teaching people how to go above and beyond in the role, that we're also going to help give them essentially some tools to avoid, um, you know, feeling like it's out of control and not sustainable. We want people to have very successful and sustainable and enjoyable and profitable Salesforce careers. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Salesforce has grown from, you know, uh, in last 20 years, I mean, you also have 20 years of experience. Salesforce is 22 years old, 23 maybe. Uh, what are the changes you have seen in the Salesforce ecosystem? Yeah, so I always like to tell people a couple of fun facts, by the way, when we're talking about 
you know, what Salesforce was like when, when I started. And, you, you know, 20 years ago, I literally went to the very first Dreamforce. Um, it's one of my claims to fame. Um, and wow. at that Dreamforce, I met with a Salesforce product manager to explain why we so de desperately needed an OR statement in our reports, a filter to report on OR. Because back then, if you wanted to report on this or that, you literally ran two reports. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's we, so... we talk about how far we've come. I like to say, like, literally, that's where we started without an OR filter in our reports. So we didn't have dashboards. Um, we, we didn't have Apex. We, were, we didn't even have S controls when I started. They, they came and then went over the years. Um, so, you know, it's funny that we kind of take for granted now, you know, 300 pages of release notes and, you know, just kind of, you know, nonchalantly read through them. Back in the day, it was like holiday, like you couldn't wait to see what was in the release notes because it was dramatic and meaningful in the early days when we were getting, you know, that kind of functionality delivered. Um, wow. So I think, That's... I think we, we talked a little bit about it already, which is the, the biggest change I think is the complexity um, in mm -hmm. you know, the technical complexity and the breadth of the platform. Um, and I think it's phenomenal for large organizations and enterprises that really can you know, run and build mission critical processes on Salesforce. Um, I think it's challenging for the smaller companies and the nonprofits as we continue to um, have things be more powerful, but yet more complex. And I think I think it's going to be interesting to see over time um, how that plays out. Correct. And and specifically speaking about smaller companies, they also get a lot of out of box features saying that, OK, this is a turnkey solution for you. Let's take it and run it. And there's so much of App Exchange products, too, helping you just getting started, you know. So uh, great. Coming back to admins. For the newer admins who are seeing this for the first time entering this ecosystem, what's, what's your one advice to them? Yeah. So first of all, I am so bullish on a Salesforce career. Like jump in. There is so much opportunity. So, you know, absolutely my advice is like, go do this. Um, I always, you know, I get, I get asked a lot, should I take a role as an admin or should I take a role as a consultant? My answer is take whatever role you can get, right? <laughs> there is not yeah. a bad first Salesforce job. Get your first Salesforce job. I don't care what it is. Get it. Get a little bit of experience because once you do, the world is your oyster, right? There are so many different mm -hmm. flavors of how you can Salesforce, big company, small company, um, solo admin, big team, whatever that is. So what I say is get the job. I don't care what it is. Start paying attention to what you love, what you don't love, right? There's, there's ways because there's so many flavors that you can find the role as you progress your career to really focus on the parts you love and maybe not so much on the parts you don't. Um, I think everybody should start broad and learn the platform, right? You, you, there are fundamentals you have to understand, data models and security and you know all of these things that regardless of what cloud you're working on, are relevant. So, you know, nail the fundamentals. And then I think over time, unless you really love being a generalist, I think we're going to see a trend of more and more areas of specialization, be that, you know, a niche like CPQ, um, it, it could be a niche like um, flow. I think we're going to start seeing, you know, autom automation specialists because that in and of mm -hmm. itself is such a particular skill. Um, but I, you know, maybe it's an industry, you know, that maybe you know all parts of the particular, you know, manufacturing cloud. So I think, um, you know, new people coming in. My my advice is open mind, pay attention to what lights you up, um, and and know that the world's your oyster. There, there's so many ways to have a very successful Salesforce career. That's what's so fantastic about it. Correct. Salesforce is so huge that one person cannot explore the complete Salesforce over their careers, right? So the <laughs> well, take and it, I mean exactly. Take it as and if I always say also, if anyone ever tells you they know all things Salesforce, like run. They are full yeah. of it. Um, and I'm a great right. example. I have been doing this probably longer than most people. And my to learn list 
is, you know, if I could sit down for the next five years and still have more to learn. I mean, it's, of it's course. a symbol in the ocean of all things Salesforce. And, you know, that, that's what's exciting because it's never boring, but it's also what makes it more challenging. I think some people kind of like, oh, I heard about the Salesforce career. I'm just going to step into it and, you know, easy breezy. It's like, <laughs> it's the best job there is, but it's not easy breezy. You will always be learning that is not just a catchphrase and that keeps you on your toes saying that okay new release came new functionality came i yep. personally have to look at flows and say oh how this works i know i so, thought i was going to go gracefully into the second half of my career and then lightning and now flow it's like come on when do i get a break <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing great uh so uh well Congratulations, a huge congratulations for your successful book launch. And uh, we are so waiting to read your book. So I'll again tell all the audience uh, seeing this video, please go click on the link in the description and uh, buy this book. Thank you. And thank you for having me. By the way, I remember several years ago, I told you I was writing this. So you were part of my accountability plan that I had to like tell certain people. So I had to make sure I actually got it done. So thank you for being part of the journey. And certainly thank you for, for helping me uh, get the word out. I really appreciate it. Great. Thanks. Uh, but tell us, will you come back to talk to us? If you will have me, I would love to. Great. We'll, we'll set something soon. Uh, really appreciate your time today. Thank you, Jody. Awesome. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.